There is a very significant piece of WA history. It has just gone on display at the Wireless Hill Museum in Applecross. Now, it's the black and white studio camera used for the very, very first TV broadcast in WA, which was on Channel 7 back in October 1959. And this is all part of a new exhibition being run by the City of Melville in partnership with an organisation called Pictures in Motion. And Tim O'Day is the president of Pictures in Motion. And with me in the studio, good morning. Morning, Nadia. Now, first of all, just tell me about your organisation. What do you do? The organisation is not-for-profit. It's basically run with volunteers, purely volunteers, and... Back in probably 2004 or thereabouts, people started working out that uh, in cinemas in particular, they were starting to throw out the the old projectors and uh, seating and all of that sort of thing. So a group of people got together and they started collecting the, the stuff before it got sent to the tip. And then there were some television people who joined in and started collecting television uh, memorabilia and equipment, basically anything that was going out of television. Wow. So is it mainly cameras? What what sort of things do you have? At at the museum at Sunset, we have cameras and we have a videotape machine, which was the first ever videotape machine in Western Australia, a two-inch videotape. How how big is it? (laughs) Well, with the actual machine, five racks. It's a couple of metres long. We've got that out there. We've got um, uh, various tape machines from um, from over over time. You know, as they developed, you know, they got smaller. The the tape got smaller, then went into cassettes, and we've got a full range of those. We've got the Channel Ten News uh, set. It's the whole set. We've even got the backdrop and the the desk. Yeah. Which has um, is basically a glass top. That's well, right. Yeah. Very scratched. It was always very uh, exciting when they took a new photo and changed the backdrop. Yeah. Uh, which would happen every few years, and you just get a different view of Perth. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we've got the full backdrop there, which yeah, brilliant. Uh, doesn't really fit where we <laughs> where we've got it, uh, but we've also got the Channel Ten, uh, what they call the presentation suite, which is the last. Where, where they actually put the program to air. Now, so for those who didn't work in TV, um, what was the explain what the presentation suite yep. was. When a TV station pushes program out, someone and a machine, as machine assisted, someone sits there and to the second actually rolls a tape machine or takes a studio, uh, an output from a studio, you know, they roll the commercials in in that other world. Uh, and, and back in the day, you'd have the, the big tapes and you would have a bank of what looked like video recorders, basically, yeah. and the machine, the tapes were in the machine and there'd be a big bank of 10 or 15 of them and you'd just be rolling through them, wouldn't in, you? In the yeah. very early days, yeah. great big machine. Yeah. They only had um, 12 um, cassettes in them <laughs> and the cassettes were two inch. <laughs> and, and Tim, you worked at Channel 7? Yes, I was... Um, Director of Engineering and a Station Manager at Channel 7 for quite a while. Tell me about the camera. Uh, you've got the, the camera from Channel 7 that was used for the first ever broadcast, TV yes. broadcast in WA. Can you describe how big this thing is? It's it's not massive, actually, because it only had the uh, technology at the time while the they have a camera tube in them. Uh, that tube is very big and, you know, that takes up the whole of the, the space. But the lens on the front, it didn't have a zoom lens. It had a turret with multiple lenses on it. So a bit like your um, iPhone right. you know, with, with multiple oh, lenses. Oh, it's got, yeah, yeah. So, so that you can zoom. And then you just pick which one you needed yeah, yeah. and use and, that and to zoom in. And the will do it. Um, they were heavy too and they were on they're, wheels, they're, weren't they're they? They're very heavy. Yeah. Yeah, you put them on uh, pedestals, which you know allow them to be moved around. And with those lenses, because they couldn't zoom, they had to move the camera in to you know to enlarge the picture. It was uh, we've we've got one of those, but we've and we've also got the uh, microphone boom from that day in there, which quite a large piece. Of that was, again, do you know how big it is? Oh, it's probably three or four meters long. 
the actual boom. And was that suspended over the top, or did you actually, no, back in the day, have somebody holding it's on, it? It's on wheels. On wheels, yeah. Coming up there, and they would. Yep. It, and it was telescopic, and it's quite a. Uh, an amazing piece of equipment. And what it also meant, I guess, uh, Tim O'Day is my guest this morning. He's president of Pictures in Motion uh, Museum of Film and Television, and there's an exhibition underway at the moment. And you, we'd love you to go and have a look at it. Um, it's being run by the City of Melville in partnership with Pictures in Motion. It, it meant you needed a lot of people to to work all this equipment and to, right. to operate this equipment. And that's how I think one of the sad things about, you know, film and TV, TV in particular, is that we've seen the workforce diminish as technology has got better. I mean, do you miss those days? I don't really miss television. But oh, <laughs> don't you? That's, that's another story. Oh, I might have yeah. to have a coffee with you later, <laughs> Tim, and get some more. Over time, it started to get to, uh, to the point where a lot of – having a lot of people around – means you've had a lot of fun. Yeah, we did. And, we did. And and the issue was that, you know, as the uh, uh, strings tightened, of course, the fun started to go. Mm -hmm. And in days that I was there, it was very exciting because the um, it was all new technology, really new technology, yeah. and we were trying to keep ahead of that. So... As that went out, that's when my, my feelings waned. Yeah, um, look, and it's pretty cutthroat too. And, yes, there's a lot of fun, but, yeah. you know, we, there's a lot of competition too. And back in the day, they used to have what they used to call wet canteens where they used to sell alcohol at the canteen. Not, not at the commercial stations. Really? Only the ABC. Really? Yes. I thought Channel 9 had a – maybe it was an unofficial Might have been unofficial. wet canteen because I'm sure when I did work experience there, I saw a certain on-camera person who will remain nameless walking in with a little whiskey <laughs> before uh, we went on the news. All right, you know what? I want to bring Jeff Waldock in. Um, Jeff has been around uh, working in TV as a chief of staff. He's uh, operated cameras. He's been around TV for a long, long time. Jeff, good morning. Good morning, two legends. I remember uh -huh. you at ten thirty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we worked together <laughs> over the years. So, did you have you managed to get your hands on some of these artifacts that are on show? Yeah, look, what happened? Uh, I was with Seven, and the left Seven to actually help set up Channel Ten Perth with Stuart Joint. And in those days, who we, hired me? We're living, yeah, <laughs> and we were living me? in Dongas out there in Dianella, and we sat there going, "Okay, this is our small studio. We need a set. Where we're going to get one built in four weeks." So I rang up Kevin Campbell at seven and Tim O'Day, and they said, yeah, we've got a couple of sets here. We'll ship them over to you. And it was the old State Affair set that uh, used to host at seven, and that came across, and we rebadged it as the first set for Channel 10. I mean, I can't believe that a rival network would give you one of their old sets. Like a well, it was either that or take it to the tip. It was either that or they were going to tip it out. <laughs> no, and uh, that's how we got it. And it was quite hilarious when you look back that, you know, um, the, 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 the work between the two stations then that was very different. Yeah, it wouldn't happen now. There's no way. Um, what are your no. memories too, Jeff, of sort of, you know, back then? I mean, because as Tim was saying, you know, you, you had new technology back then and now we look at it and go, oh, my God, that is so ancient. Absolutely. Well, uh, Tim O'Day would remember this one uh, quite vividly, I think, but when Seven rebadged the news to 6 o'clock, because uh, they used to be 6.30, and we relaunched uh, Seven News and um, State Affair. The very first night on air, after all the hoo-ha and publicity, we rolled the opener for State Affair. The first story started and started to rewind on air. We tried five times and they kept on doing it. And it turned out there was a little thing in the machine, because there were new machines, that every time we picked up the first edit, it would rewind the whole story on air. Oh. And Tim O'Day figured it out while we were on air and went, oh, that's what the problem is. And uh, that was one great memory from the old seven days. But technology has definitely changed now. It's all computerised and a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff and I go back a long way. Just, just in case. <laughs> yeah, good to talk to you, Jeff. They're great memories. Thank you so much. Um, always lovely to talk to Jeff. I remember my first job was at um, in TV was at GWN Golden West Network, which was actually at the time owned by Kerry Stokes. He didn't have any other TV stations. He had just had GWN. And back in the day, uh, the presentation suite, as you were talking about, where we'd fire off all of our news bulletins and news stories, was on one end of the. Station 
station and the newsroom was at the other end and uh, there was many a time when we would be running from one end of the station at the other to get the physical tape to the presentation person so they could actually put it in the machine and fire off the news break yeah. or the story. Because, of course, when I started, um, they were still shooting on film. Yeah. So it was all, all you know, edited and collected and all that on film, which... Um, was quite a process, and that's and that's what the uh, exhibition is about: is that transition through the various technologies. Look, uh, and I'll give the details of, of where you can see this, but um, just on on all of that wonderful stuff that you have, um, you've got a bit of a problem in finding a permanent home. What's the situation? Yeah, we we have um, in excess of three thousand items in the uh, collection not including a uh, film library that we have, which has 5,000 reels in it. And it's at Sunset Hospital up in Dalkeith in a heritage listing building on that site, and that's operated by the government. They now want to refurbish or restore the buildings to back to its heritage state. And Which means uh, you've got to move out. So we, we need to move out, and we've got to move out by November this year at this stage. So um, yes, we're um, you know we we have a lot of stuff there crammed into a little building. <laughs> so you'd love it. You're looking for a new home because what what if you can't find a new home? What happens? Well, we haven't really contemplated. Well, well, some Hopefully you don't some, need some to. of us had. You know that collection could be lost. Yeah. Which we, it's such a rich part of our TV history. Ideally, if somebody has some space or some ideas of where you could move uh, this collection yeah. and, and have, house it permanently, would be fantastic. If they can get in touch with us, we'd love you to. Yes, we have cinema projectors as well and stuff from the cinema era. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot there that if if it goes, you know, you'll never recover. Look, if you can help and if you've got some ideas as to um, a new home for this collection, uh, we'd love you to get in touch. Do that and we can um, pass your details on to Tim O'Day, who's the president of Pictures in Motion Museum of Film and Television. Fantastic to have you in. Good luck with the exhibition and good luck with finding a new home. Yeah. And if anyone can help, please get in touch. Now, uh, if you want to have a look, uh, City of Melville is partnering with this exhibition. It's just opened at Wireless Hill, uh, displaying some of those wonderful historical artefacts that they've all managed to get their hands on. You've got until the 5th of May, from Wednesday to Sunday every week, to see this exhibition. So if you can get on down, please do it. (laughs) 